so this is the, the the key art like we say about the about the game we are about to launch in uh, one month in november 9 for the centenary of, of world war one of the end and it's very interesting to follow on the the, the previous uh, uh, show because it's exactly uh, what we want There for the fighting. He was a father, only there to find his son, missing in action. The boy's name was Harry, a Canadian, a photographer. He reminded me of my boy, so young. He should never have been at war. Ah, but none of that matters. No one cares. The only one that does care about you here is me. If you do what I say, I promise to protect you. If not, I'll kill you all myself. <laughs> so, if you're lucky, make the right decisions, you might just make it home. Alive. The, the ending is a bit too commercial in a way, but this is the big publisher kind of ending of a trailer. Uh, so this is the, the, the release date of, of the game. We just finished the game like last week. So it's good now we are approved on Xbox and PlayStation, so it's good now we can can relieve. So uh, what is interesting about that project, there are many facets of this project, the historical facet, the, the meaningful facet of the story itself, and also what I will talk more today uh, is about the visual style. Uh, that is, uh, you can see it a bit in the, in the video, but it's not very clear because the compression, the, the MPEG compression, does not react very well on, the, on what we did in the game that is a painterly, a 3D painting. And this 3D painting technology we developed uh, uh, adds a lot of strokes, of painting strokes all over the, the picture. And those strokes, they are boiling, like we say in animation, the boiling effect. And this boiling effect makes the, the MPEG compression not understand the picture because MPEG is based on prediction of movement. And in this kind of picture, you cannot predict the movement. So the compression is always really ugly. Um, so this is this is one of the aspects. I will show you another video the, that is more, uh, so this is the, the partnership uh, between a gaming 
company and, and a movie company. And this is something very interesting that, that I hope we will see more and more, that uh, movie companies, if they understand the, the medium of video game another way, uh, and not just like making a game of a movie, you know, like a license, but making a creation in a video game, it can be very interesting because they will learn from video game and we can learn from their expertise of, of art and, and all, all what they can uh, uh, bring into the video game field that is very important. Uh, so th those are the characters you saw in the, in the trailer. So th this is Harry, a Canadian, and Kurt, the, the German. And um, the, the important thing in that game is that you will play both sides, you will play those two characters. And we were lucky because uh, with, um, with a big uh, publisher like Bandai Namco uh, that really believed in the, in the project, uh, we, could, uh, we could even have like, very uh, famous actors to make the voices because the voices are very important in that game. Uh, and so we managed to have uh, Elijah Wood for, for Harry and Sebastian Koch for Kurt that is a very, a very talented actor and famous in Germany and France. Uh, and the, the, the funny thing is that uh, Sebastian Koch never did a, a, a game before. It was his first video game, voice for video game. So he was a bit stressed, he didn't know how to act. Uh, but it was very interesting and, and Elijah Wood is a gamer, so he knew exactly what to do and how to repeat the lines and do all those variations that we need in a, in a game. Uh, so that was a very interesting experience and we went to Berlin, we went to, to a lot of locations to, to, um, to record the voices. Um, and I will, uh, so yeah, this is uh, some pictures of uh, in-game. So this is the, oh, the trailer was made in-game also. Uh, so this is when you remove the painterly style. And this is some debug, what we call the debug views. Uh, some kind of debug views to, to explain a bit how works the shader, the painterly shader. Uh, and so the, the black area, for example, when you see the black one is when we, we um, disable the real picture of the 3D and we just have the particles. So at the end, the, it's a bit complex, it's very technical. Uh, the vertex are used for the, the, the site of the strokes, for example. And uh, so we, it's a, a very, like, this is the kind of memory. Well, it, it's very complex, technically. Uh, it took two years to make that, that uh, painterly effect. It's not just an effect, it's the way we render the 3D in 2D at the end. Uh, and for the artist, it was very complex because they couldn't make the normal like texturing and it, it was not like any other video game or even a CGI uh, movie because they had to think about what's next, like which stroke I will use, uh, the, the brush size, the brush boiling frequency, uh, I mean a, lo a lot of things. So that, that was very challenging for the, for the artist too. Uh, there is another video that shows more about the team and I think it's important to, to, to show the team behind a, a game. Uh, so I hope this will be... Yeah, this is a kind of a making of. Congratulations. And, uh, <laughs> I will, this this is one that, I, it's a bit of a spoiler, but this is triggered in the game when you collect all the collectibles in the game. So this is kind of rewarded video you could have. This is the team in Montpellier. This is, uh, uh, and this is Bram, the art director. I'm Bram and I'm the art director for 11.11. So it's my job to design, tickle and tease the visuals until they convey the story and moods that we want. This game tries to say that Nothing is black or white, and even more during war times. What if we could took all those emotions that were left behind and do a game about them? So at the beginning of the Memories Retold development, it was really a linear story. But at some point we said, what if we let the, the player choose what character you want to play, when you want to play? It's been special to lend a voice to narrative that feels very refreshing and different within the context of the World War I experience in games. The good thing with this game is that the player can decide, you know, play, you, you are the, the master of the game. So I'm, I'm not very familiar with these video games, but I was deeply impressed how, how exciting that is. Both characters will change during the story, and I want the players to feel that they've traveled with them. Puzzles are there to be like, if this person was in World War One, what would they be doing at this point? You connect with what the characters do in the story. 
think the art style will help convey the emotional journey by the fact that we can use things subjectively. We can use our paint strokes, angles and colour palettes and our lighting to convey more convincingly and emotively the themes. We control the paint to the effect with a set of textures that will control brush size, brush type, brush direction, and that's like a second texture, which just the paint to the effect sees, and it will read out all that information and start applying brush strokes on top of it. It is very tricky to get an engine to perform what we're trying to do because there's a lot of performance overheads and there's also just the fact that what we're trying to do is pretty uniquely human. So when a human's doing a painting, they make thousands and thousands of decisions about what marks to make, what colours to use, and that's the challenge we took on. How do we actually teach a game engine to paint? If just one person in the world kind of played it and got to the end of it and felt deep emotion, felt a connection to that moment in history and walked away like being thankful and thoughtful and considerate and overwhelmed by actually quite what had happened in history, then we'd have done a great thing. So this is one of the free videos you can unlock in the game when you, when you collect all the historical uh, objects we added into the, into the game. Uh, and, and I think uh, that, that's, uh, that's about it. Th those are some key arts uh, of, the, of the game. Um, some of them were real painting uh, on paper and, and some of them were digital painting on, on Photoshop. And uh, we even used uh, those artworks during the what we call the interstitials, like between the sequences, because this game goes from 1916 to 1918. So those two years of this big journey for the two characters has a lot of ellipses. And those moments of ellipses, they are symbolized by uh, this kind of artwork, like animation, that makes you travel from one, uh, one uh, location to another one. So that's, uh, don't hesitate to ask more questions after about the, the project and the, the team, the, the, what, what we've done. Thank you.